It was a dark and stormy night. No, not really. It's a dark and stormy day. Well, really not stormy, but there's no blue sky, so I can't brag on that blue sky. Hey, we're gonna go out and take a ride. We're gonna try to get down Ridge Road South. If we can't do that, we'll go check on the cows or something or another. But it's a, it's a Monday morning, and we're trying to get a ride in before a cold front comes through, so Y'all grab something and hang on, we'll catch y'all out on the road. Roll that intro. everybody we're back out on the road yeah in just that little bit of time that I, I told y'all it was dark and stormy well old Forrest Gump said and just like that the Sun came out Ooh, my brakes sound terrible yeah just like that the Sun came out so we're taking a little Monday lunchtime ride. What are we riding? The Magic Cycle Deer. You can start seeing me a lot on the on the deer. I'm a, I'm gonna start using the deer for just about all of my my riding over Ridge Road and whatnot and around. Maybe all my picky and rides will be. Bite like the Jaguarundi. Seeing I don't have the uh, Bandit Forerunner, I mean, that's, that's all part of our extended review program, our burp as we call it. <laughs> oh, I can't say it without laughing. Yeah, and Donald's got the LX 4.0, so I tell you what we did, we freed up a little bit of room in our shed, and that makes us happy. So we're riding over the Ace McQueen Road here. We're gonna, got a little purpose. That wind is whipping. I don't see no horses. I see no horses. There's actually a bunch of rain over around uh, Louisiana coming this way. So we kind of halfway expect to see some of that after a while. So I figured we better come on over and get our get our ride in today at lunch. So we hope this video finds everybody healthy, happy, and well. We cruising along here about about 19 mile per hour, 18, 19 mile per hour, something like that. The leaves are starting to turn. I've seen some beautiful pictures people have posted on uh, Facebook Magic Cycle page. I got my little long sleeve shirt on because it's uh it's probably in the low 60s here, and you know while. Uh, some of y'all would find that warm. It's <laughs> and that wind blowing. It's a little chippy chilly for me. Me and my old thin Mississippi blood. Come on around here, dude. You can't see what's coming. Just come on around. Got to adjust my rear view camera. It's angled off to the. It's angled off to the side there a little bit, which I don't. Once I get up here, I won't need it. Unless I go to the left, I'm gonna try to go to the right. My purpose is to go south on Ridge Road. And y'all might say, well, why don't? Why hadn't you been doing that all this time? Because 
these water holes down there, but it is so dry, y'all. And I'm hoping there won't be any water in them holes, but I kind of think it, it might still be some in them holes. If so, we might take the deer mud riding a little bit. I don't mind the mud riding. I just don't want to get off in one of them and fall down and get mud all over me. Yep, as you can see, there's a little bit of water, but I think we can get around that. See, these holes are usually full of water. Well, that's all right. I don't know about this one up here. Maybe we can go around the edge here. Oh yeah. Yep. That wasn't bad. So Ridge Road South. We're going down into the heart of what we call the buffer zone. And what is the buffer zone? Buffer zone is is the buffer is, a, is an area, several hundred thousand acres that they created around the NASA test facilities down here where they test rockets. And they created that buffer zone back in the Apollo program because they had no idea what some of these engines, what kind of uh, rumbling and ripping they're going to do. And they had no idea what kind of effect it was gonna have on the uh, people around here. All right, it's gonna have to be careful here. Yep, there we go. First time I come down this road, I was on the Magicycle Cruiser. And I had just got the, I had just got the suspension seat post for it. It sure helps have that suspension seat post. Yeah, we got a little bit of blue sky, but it has been, uh, it has been foggy and uh, cloudy and uh, gloomy all morning. I sat there and looked out the window. I said, it's gonna be, hot. GoPro's gonna have to work overtime to do a decent video. But look at the sun now. I just go show you how quick things can change. This is our old deer hunting country and down here. Let me tell y'all where this road comes out at first. Uh, this road comes out if I go down Highway 607 down yonder and I'm fixing to turn and go out Texas flat like I'm going towards McLeod Park, towards Bay St. Louis and places like that. This road comes out right at the intersection of Texas flat and Highway 607. This used to be a very uh, well-traveled road at the time. I mean, people were traveling this road back in the 40s and 50s. Y'all remember me telling y'all about the time Daddy, Daddy and them come down here to Uncle Ellis's. I'll try to show y'all. Now a lot of this has changed, but I'll try to show y'all about where Uncle Ellis's would have been. But Daddy and them come down here to help Uncle Ellis and them plant some peas. And y'all remember me telling y'all that story about the the pea bag. It was a burlap bag, and that thing got over there against the wagon wheel and the wagon wheel tore a hole in it. And they wound up spreading all their peas between the old place around there, back there where we come from. Y'all know where the old place is. There where the horses are. And around here at Uncle Ellis's. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it sounds, I mean, we, we laugh about it now, but I don't imagine it was funny to Grandpa and Daddy and them. A pea seed was probably hard to come by. Most people made their own seed back then by, you know, saving some from that year's crop. 
But yeah, this is Old Ridge Road here. And we just entered Hancock County. Left out of Pearl River County, which is where I live. So we ought to have a decent ride down through here. Some beautiful country. I just wish they would do something with the road, but then again, if they did something with the road, it'd probably be a, probably be a racetrack or something down through here. I tell you what I wish they would do with it. I wish they'd make a, like a, a park out of it, a bike park, bike paths and stuff like that. Two years ago, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't uh, give a rat's behind about a bike path or a place to ride bikes, but I do now because things changed. Well, what changed about that? Well, I told y'all what all changed. I told y'all that on the long leaf trace. All right, this is uh, this is the old what we call the old Battler Road here. Billy Wayne and them got some little string stretched across there, but that's that's the old Battler Road there. And that's the road I was telling y'all about where uh, Daddy and them went down there to help them plant peas in the wagon rut, wagon wheel tore the bag up. Anyway, it was down that road that uh, Daddy rode over there one day, I don't know, to visit, visit Battler or whatever. Battler was Daddy's cousin. And he was Uncle Hutch's boy. He was Uncle Hutch's boy. And Daddy always told this story. He said Uncle Hutch was hard of hearing. As I guess a lot of people. But people today hard of hearing, but they got help from hearing aids and all that. Now this is, uh, y'all know Billy Wayne, Billy Wayne, this, this, he kind of looks, helps him look after this place here. It's a little uh, fish pond here. Very nice little fish pond. But it looks like it needs water like everything, everything else drying up around here. Pretty place. But yeah, Daddy went down there and to see Battler. And he passed Battler out there in the edge of the woods and Battler was laid down on the ground rolling around. And he hollered and told Daddy the, the bees was eating him up. And Daddy had to go, or go down to the old house. Or he seen Uncle Hutch sitting on the porch. And he just ran by Uncle Hutch. And he told Uncle Hutch, said, Uncle Hutch said the, the bees is eating Battler up. <laughs> Uncle Hutch didn't know what he said. He thought he was talking about his peas. <laughs> and he told Daddy, he said, yeah, I'm gonna lay them by next week. I don't know if any of y'all know what laying by peas means. That means plow them out. Plow them out and, and about, you know, get and watch for them to start blooming. That's when they're getting on up in age. But yeah, he couldn't hear what Daddy said. Daddy was trying to tell him that he was running because Battler was in the bees and the bees was eating Battler up. One of Daddy's stories they always told us, and it's one that we we kind of wish to preserve. Uh, you know, in a way that, you know, when I got started riding a bike, I just, I just thought, what a good way to preserve these stories. And I honestly never ever thought anybody would want to hear them, except maybe the family. The family always loved to hear them. Now this is the old TJ Road. This is TJ Frierson Road. Now, now let me tell you where the man that lived on this road See, they, they had to move out of the test site just like just like we did, a lot of other folks did. But the man who lived on here, on, uh, here, TJ, his place is right there at the end of Joe Bennett Road where the white mailbox is. Yeah, sometime we start our videos there. 
and that's Mr. T.J. Frierson. Now they was doing more dirt, dirt, dirt digging down in here, but I don't know if they uh. I don't know if they still digging or not. I don't see any uh. I don't see any fresh fresh tracks in here you know where people have been driving trucks and stuff like that so I would assume that they aren't digging in here yet right now yeah look at that blue sky y'all it just all of a sudden it just appeared so y'all we are in the heart of the buffer zone here and I'm fixing to roll over the railroad here. It looks like they got a gate across here, so I guess I won't be able to roll by the railroad, but at least I can show you about where it's at there. These people that own these land where they dig dirt, they put the gates up here to keep a lot of unnecessary traffic out, I guess. There's the railroad right up there. The railroad that, that we cross right there by the horses, and I'm always referring that, that's the railroad that went to the test site. Well, they since abandoned it. That's the one that I would love to make a rail trail out of. It would be about 10 miles, I guess, but I mean, it wouldn't be very long, but I'd love to make a rail trail out of that. It goes all the way down to Stennis Space Center, and it's not being used. In fact, it's grown up. If, if I had a chance to go through there, you would probably wouldn't even tell we crossed a railroad. It's kind of like there by where the horses is. If you didn't know there was a railroad there, you'd, you know, you'd never know it. Had I not told you. I don't know, I can't remember half of what these old places was, but I know Mr. TJ's place was down in here. I know one thing, I ain't gonna do a whole lot of monkeying around down in here. Of course, I got my phone with me, but I ain't gonna do no whole lot of hill climbing and stuff like that. Cause this is way away from everything in here. Of course, the magic cycle deer, it would be able to do whatever I ask it to do. Alrighty, yeah. Look, little land bridge goes around here. Somebody's got a bucket over there. They've been shooting their high-powered rifle. Getting, uh, getting things done. Getting, getting rifle sighted in for hunting season. Let's see if we can get turn around here. Oh yeah, old magic cycle deer. It pretty much does what I ask it to. That'd be the magic cycle deer. There's some nice little deer tracks back there beside this deer tracks, the real deer. Anyway, speaking of the deer, he's a good friend of mine. He's in a hunting club down in Pearl River. Oh, well, it's, it's out from Pearl River down on, down on there on 36. It goes out toward the Beater Springs and uh, they got them a little hunting club down there, the Mossy Hill Hunting Club. And he was telling me yesterday he wanted to get one of my cards from me. He said the, the club director wants to talk to me about getting an e-bike and seeing what they can get for a raffle. 
because uh, whenever they have youth hunts and stuff like that, they always they always want to do a raffle. And I told them, I said, we can certainly accommodate you. And he said, I don't know what kind, you know, would be the best. I said, well, one of the other boys standing there and said, well, he does, he owns a, he owns a deer. He said, that would be the one you'd want. And I had to agree with him. I had to agree with, with uh, Charles there. He said, that we got a deer, we sure do. And that would be the one that I would highly recommend. Now that, that road straight ahead, that's all growed up. But that used to go out into the, what we call the backwoods. Now, I don't even think nobody drives that no more. But out there you had the old boneyard road where they used to haul the cow bones and uh, Mars Bay Road, Turtle Skin Road. Oh uh, yeah, all out there in the backwoods. We used to hunt all out in there. And then again, we used to fox hunt all out through here. You know, we'd bring dogs and let them run the fox. Dogs loved it. This is one of the places, you remember I told y'all one time, remember I told y'all one time about the old Black Panther that lived over on Ridge Road here. And he come through the yard a squalling there a few times. And we seen him, I seen him, I think I wound up seeing him two or three times. He killed some of Mr. J.M.'s uh, caves up there on the road by where the cows are there. He killed a few of them. And it was black, and it was a big cat. Now what it was, I have no idea. They say there ain't no such thing as a panther, black panther, but it, 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 it was, it was a big black cat, whatever it was, mountain lion, cougar, whatever. I won't argue with the biologist, I just know what we saw. So yeah, this is a place y'all hadn't been. Well, I'm glad to bring y'all. I'm glad to bring y'all down in, uh, to a new place. But anyway, we was fox hunting over here one night. Had some of the boys there with us, Charlie and Bobo and we was having us a good old time and we been just a bunch of boys. We wasn't up to, you know. What we did, we'd come out and just run the dogs and, and sit around and eat and build a fire and talk, shoot the bull and things like that. We had a good time. And we had a place there we was uh we had been eating and we had some bread crumbs and some old cookie crumbs and maybe some cinnamon rolls and stuff like that. And we was throwing them crumbs out in the edge of the woods there. Well directly some of them boys said, Y'all, I see some I see some some red eyes. I think they was red what he described them. They some eyes out in them woods there that I don't like the looks of. He said, where's it at? He said, it's behind y'all, out behind the fire there. We didn't pay no attention to it. We just, we just laughed it off, you know. But I can tell you what we did. We left there and we come around here by Aunt, uh, by Aunt Jenny's old place out back there. And we were sitting there because the dogs moved a little further down through the woods and we wanted to get down here closer to them. And after a while, 
me and uh, a couple of them boys say, well, it's, it, you know, it's, it's time for us to go, so we just gonna ease on. And we drove back around, and where we had that fire built before, and we'd been throwing them breadcrumbs out, there was there was Mr. Black Cat sitting there in the road eating, eating some uh, scraps that we had thrown out. From some of the dirt haulers. Guess they hauling back in yonder. Yeah, this is the same operation that Billy Wayne's got, but I think that's some this is somebody somebody else down here. Same operation like Billy Billy Wayne works at. So we won't mess with them. We'll get on up back up the road. It's we're about bingo time on our lunch break, so it's time for us to turn around and head on back. So yeah, well there there it was. It was sitting there in the road. I was sitting there in the road eating, eating. And it wasn't no house cat, y'all. I know what you're thinking, it wasn't no house cat. This thing was big. It was big enough to bring down a cave. i tell you that. And drag it off. Isn't this a pretty ride, y'all? See, and right down the road there, let me just tell y'all that. I don't remember whose old place it. I think this is the place that went to Aunt Esther's. Mickey and them will know who I'm talking about. Aunt Esther's. Yeah, well, somebody's got a something where they've been shooting. But yeah, that that went to uh, Aunt Esther's and Smokey's old place there, up in there. Yeah. But all this in woods has changed. I never will forget, I had a brand new truck. I come out here and went down that road right there, the old Smoky Road. Went up in there and they had some ruts that kind of meandered through some, some trees there. Little muddy ruts. I got down in them muddy ruts and that truck kicked out of them muddy ruts. And that thing slapped, a, slapped the side of a pine tree. Brand new truck. I didn't need defender on it. I went back home. I, I figured my daddy would be mad at me, but daddy kind of like, son, that's, that's, your, that's your doings. <laughs> You're paying the notes on it. You want to bend it and bang it up. But he, he didn't say anything. I went and got it fixed. I never will forget that. I hated that big old dent in the side of the truck. So yeah, we're gonna try to we're gonna try to uh, if the if the lady asks us to, we'll help her we'll help her out get her a get her a e bike for her her hunting club rifle. Now you know. Everybody goes after these uh, Bakus, I think that's how you pronounce it. I really don't know, but uh, all these big high dollar hunting rigs, hunting bikes. But honestly and truly, the old deer just as, oh deer is the same bike or better, I can tell you, because deer is 52 volts and those bikes are 48 volts in most situations. See, I can't remember what half of, half of these old places are because they've all changed. They come in here and dug them out with, they dug bar pits and, and all in here. And everything's changed. See some of the old asphalt right there? That's some of the original old asphalt that was laid down whenever, whenever this road was asphalted last, back in the 60s, 50s, 50s I guess. And it's still some of it there.
Yep, we got a cold front coming through, y'all. Of course, I mentioned on uh, one of the long leaf cold fronts about that comfort food, you know, you got to have during them cold fronts. And, uh, so, yeah, Susan asked her this morning, well, what you got planned cooking the next few days? Well, it's going to be, they say it's going to be 29 here Thursday morning. <laughs> so, you know, we got to get that, that cold, cold front food cooked up. Whatever it's going to be, chili, uh, tater soup. We just had tater soup, so I will imagine it'll be tater soup. Well, she, oh, I know what she's doing. She's doing chili because she got the ground meat laid out there, there at the house now for it. So that's what we're going to be having for Thursday is uh, chili. And she'll cook that pot up. We'll eat on that stuff for <laughs> three or four days. <laughs> yeah. Pretty little pond. Nice, nice pond. They got some water coming in there from somewhere. I guess that's why it's kind of maintaining its level. I thought it was dry, but no, it's it's a. You know what they got? They got an old well down in there. Uh, pr probably one of these. In fact, I think this is uh. This is Uncle Ellis and Aunt Beatty's old place here, and Uncle and. Uncle Ellis and them had an old well out in there. We used to ride our bikes down here, y'all, when we was boys. It was a great place to ride bikes. Yeah, this is Uncle Ellis's. I wonder if Daddy's old persimmon tree is still up here. I bet you it is. I got time, I'm gonna stop and take a look. Daddy used to come down here Mickey and Emma know what I'm talking about. That's it. That looks like it right there. That's it right there. But it's about dead. But Daddy come here for years, y'all, and he would pick persimmons off of that tree right there. And eat them. Take him a, take him a mess off them home. Now, we're not talking about some of these store-bought persimmons. We're talking about possum persimmons. Same ones the possum eats. Yeah, Daddy. Daddy used to come down there. Daddy always said, he said he had never starved to death in persimmon, in persimmon uh, season. You know, kids, you know, we, we mentioned to y'all uh, in the other video about, uh, in the picky video about kids growing hungry. We mentioned to y'all about how it was when daddy and them grew up in the depression. Well, you know, kids nowadays had to get out in the woods and scrap for something to eat. I mean, that, that was seriously what you what they meant by scratching up something to eat. Well, you can get out there and scratch up something. And for daddy, it was in persimmons back there. Daddy eat persimmons off that tree for many, many years. Oh, uh, crab apples, whatever, whatever you could find, berries. Remember on the possum walk video, I said these things that kids nowadays wouldn't know anything about. Well, kids nowadays wouldn't know what it was like to go uh, go climb up in a persimmon tree or shake out some persimmons. Anyway. I imagine this one's kind of starting to get long by now, so I don't want to run it over time. Starting to get back in the mud here, mud holes, so I gotta concentrate on getting through these things. I see some buzzards up here. They must be waiting, waiting to eat something or another. Hopefully they ain't waiting on me. You got a little while longer there, Mr. Buzzard. Y'all know the routine. Hey, if you like this major cycle deer and you think it might be something that you want or some of them other bikes that I have, 
hey, check on check on that Magicycle link in my description there, and y'all can uh, pick your bike up from there. Feel free to use discount tr uh, codes that that I have there listed in my description. They'll work for you. 100 or 200 or 300, it's according to what you buy. Or for the deer, I think it's $200 off unless they change things. Yeah, there's a rough road there. But the deer can handle it. Put my email down there for y'all. Anybody got any question about anything? Feel free to, hey, feel free to ask. I'll usually get right back with you if I can help you, and I'll be glad to try. Y'all know the rest of the story as we pass by this old down pine tree here. Hit that like and that subscribe, y'all, if you will. I believe I checked this morning, we're at 914. We got 14 subscribers in two days. So, this thing clicking along like a one-legged duck. <laughs> Until we see y'all again out here on the trail, Rip One Outdoors, we bid y'all peace. <laughs>